Hello students, today we are going to start a new chapter of class 12 syllabus which is the file handling. File handling is one of the most important chapters of class 12 syllabus. So this is the part 1 of this particular chapter and today we are going to have an overview discussion on what are the topics that are in this particular chapter and the basic introduction to data file handling. So without any further ado, let's go through the syllabus. So this is our syllabus and from the syllabus we are going to discuss the topics which are highlighted in red. So let's start with the discussion with what is a file. So a file may be defined as a bunch of bytes which is stored on some storage device like hard disk, pen drive, SSD etc. So if you just write type a letter in MS Word and just store it in your hard disk then it will be called as a file. If you write a python program and store it then it will be called as a file. That means it is and within the file if we go to see from with respect to memory what can we say it is a bunch of bytes that means uh, the things are stored in the form of bytes if we see it with respect to memory allocation if we do not store it permanently then it cannot be said as a file so files can be of various types like audio video images etc but basically all these things can be summarized into three categories. The categories are first is text files, second is binary files, the audio, video, images, all this comes under binary file and the third is CSV files or the comma separated value files. Now what is the purpose of files? That means why are we st uh, studying this chapter? We could have done python even without this chapter but what is the purpose of files and what is the purpose of studying this chapter? So let's see it with the help of some cases. So let's go through case 1 without files. That means if we do not use the concept of files how a program will, get, will run and if we use files how a program will store the output. Okay, so let's go through case one. So in a program, there are basically three parts. First, we have the program. Secondly, we have RAM where temporarily data is stored. And thirdly, we have the hard disk where data is stored permanently. About RAM, program, hard disk, all these you have already learned in details in your class 11 syllabus. Now, if I write a Python program and run it, what happens? The running thing the output is stored in RAM temporarily that means till the program is executing the output is stored in RAM and after we just press the stop button or if we just run a different program the previous program will go out of the RAM. So if the previous program goes out of the RAM if you want to see your output at a later point of time can you do it? No you cannot do it. Therefore, the requirement of files comes into play. Remember RAM, if we store data in RAM, it is a temporary storage, hence data loss occurs. Now, let's say two of your friends, they are just talking casually among them. Now, if you want their conversation to be heard at a later point of time, what you need to do? You need to record it either via audio or via video. Only if you record it, then only you will be able to listen to the conversation at a later point of time. But if you do not record it, then once it is said, then it's done. You cannot listen it again and again. Now recording means what? Recording means storing it permanently in hard disk. So let's go to the case 2 with files. So with files also, there will be three situations, three things. Program is there, RAM is there and hard disk is there in the computer. Now, if you run a program, the output will go to the RAM. Now, if you want to like store the output permanently, then what you need to do whenever it is in RAM, while it is in RAM, at that moment only you need to transfer it from RAM to hard disk. Only if you transfer it from RAM to hard disk at that moment, then only you can store it permanently. Now, what will happen if you store it permanently? If you store it permanently, then you can access your output. That means you can write into the output or you can read from that file at a later point of time. This is the purpose of files. So in one line, if I want to say the purpose of files, it is used for storing data 
permanently and for retrieving the data means reading the data at a later point of time. If we do not use the concept of files, then also we can do our programs without any hassle, but the output cannot be stored permanently in an external file. Okay. For example, let's uh, go through a simple program. So this is the program to find the sum of two numbers. So here we have taken two variables a and b which will receive the first number and the second number respectively and the result is stored in the variable c and the output is displayed. So let's run this program. So as I run this program what is being asked enter the first number. Let's say I enter the first number as 7 press the enter key then it will ask me the second number. Let's say I'll enter the second number as 2 and press the enter key then I'm getting the sum as 9. Now while it was executing it was in RAM. But as I press the enter key for the second time, now I cannot get this output again. Now if I run it, can I get the previous output? No, I cannot get the previous output from anywhere. Okay, why this is happening? This is happening because we are not storing the data permanently. But using the concepts of file, you can store this data permanently in an external file. Okay, so let's move on with the first type of files which is the text file now what is a text file the type of files which can store information in readable format are called text file now if the files store information in human readable form then it is known as text file it contains letters symbols and or its combination so text file may contain various letters various symbols plus minus into division etc or its combination each line of text in a text file is terminated by an end of line character or slash and or new line character now after writing a single line in a text file as you press the enter key then a new line character that is slash n is automatically added at the end of that particular line. Let's say there are five lines in a text file. After the first line is complete, a new line character will be there. After the second line is complete, the new line character will be there and so on. Okay, so extension of text file is .txt. Now, as you know, each and every file has some extension. Similarly, text file also have an extension and the extension of text file is .txt. Okay, so let's just show you a program. Now, I'll not go into the details. So, let's say I have, an, have a text file abc.txt and this is the content of the text file abc.txt. TXT. Now, if I want to read this text file with the help of Python programming language, I can do it. Now, how to read it? What are the syntaxes? What are the functions associated? Those I will not discuss in details in this part. Those I will discuss in the upcoming classes. Okay. So, this is the program. I will not go into the details of this program. I will just run and show you that I can read that file. Yes, I have just run it. If you have missed it, I will just run it again. So, as you can see, Whatever was the content of the file, what was the content of the file? 1 allies, 2 bob, if I can just show you the content again, it is 1 allies, 2 bob. So this is a text file, how you can say it? Because it has the extension .txt. So what I have done through this program? Through this program, I have read the content from that particular file. So this is one of the function which will be discussed while we go to a, to a detailed discussion on text file. Now, I'm just giving an overview of what we are going to study and learn in this particular chapter. Next up is binary files. So, the type of file which stores information in the same format in which the information in, is held in memory are called binary files. So, binary files, it consists of like audio, video, the compiled files. So, in these files, the information is stored in the same format in which it is held in memory. Now, as you all know that computers can understand only machine readable codes. Now, in binary files, the things or the information is stored in machine readable code. The compiled files like after compilation of various programming languages files, whatever file is generated, this, that is called as the object file or the binary file. The images, the audio, video, etc. all comes under binary file. Okay. 
so many binary file formats contains parts that can be interpreted as text now if you read a binary file there will be various unreadable symbols but out of those unreadable symbols there may be some readable symbols but you cannot interpret those readable uh, information also let's say there is an image within the image you can just fi find some text like a b f c all these things but you cannot interpret the meaning from those uh, characters but in case of text file it is in a human readable and understandable form let's go uh, through a program so let's say i have this particular image so if we can just focus here the name of this image is pi what is this image this is a binary file okay now i'll just show you how to read information i'll not go into the details i'll just run this program and so so this is a program with the help of which binary files can be read here i've given the name of the program what is the purpose of read open close all this i'll be discussing in details on the part on binary files this is just an overview so now if i just run this file you can see the output so i'll just run this file so you can see this output this is the output of the image file now can you interpret the meaning of these characters x d 7 4 a x 9 b you cannot interpret it right why because now the output is shown in the same format in which it is held in memory so remember binary files are you are not understandable by humans okay it can be text file images audio video etc let's go to the last type of files which we shall be discussing in details which is the csv files or the comma separated value files it is a delimited text file that uses a comma to separate values from one another now the speciality of this type of files is that after uh, one object is written the next object before the next object is written you have to separate it by a delimiter text what is the delimiter here the delimiter is comma here that means after each character or after each string or each value you have to separate it from the next value with the help of a comma okay so now if in the entire file the entire things are separated by commas after one object then it is known as a csv files each line of a csv file is a data record now each line of a csv a csv file contains the information about a particular entity each record consists of one or more fields separated by a comma i'll show you a, a practical csv file now so there you can see that each record or each row contains one or more fields and each field is separated with the help of a comma okay the extension for this category of files is .csv now as you know that each type of file has an ext extension so the extension for csv file is what the extension for csv files is .csv now let's look at a csv file now if i can just show you if you can just see here the name of this file is demo underscore csv dot csv okay so now as you can just see look at this file each uh, object is separated by a comma okay so here i have id comma name and 101 comma allies 102 comma raj 103 comma bob so this is a csv file because each character in the same line is separated by a comma but for the last object of a particular line it is not separated by a comma here now let us read this file with the help of python programming language remember i'll not go into the details of this in this part but obviously i'll go into these details in the upcoming discussion on csv files in a different part now this is the program don't worry about understanding the meaning i'll be explaining it in details now if i just run it see i'm getting the details of that particular file which is id name 101 allies 102 raj 103 bob now as you can see each line has been uh, shown in the form of a list all of us know what is a list in python list are a list of values which is separated uh, which is enclosed within the third bracket okay so this is just an overview of the different types of files now in a file certain operations can be done 
let us see what are the operations which can be done on a file now these operations can be done in all type of files be it text files be it binary files or be it a csv file so the operations are reading from files we will be seeing all these operations programmatically in the upcoming parts writing into files reading from files means if a file is if some content is already stored in the file if you are just viewing it through python it is called reading from files just as i have shown you a few minutes back regarding all the three type category of files next is writing into files writing into file means if you are storing the output from the python shell and storing it in an external file it is called writing into files that writing means while the program is being executed in ram if at that point of time only you you have carried it and stored it in an external in external hard disk or anywhere in external device then it is known as writing into files and the third is appending data into files now appending means suppose let's say there is a file of 100 records now appending means without disturbing the earlier data if you are adding new data to the end of a file then it is known as appending data to files appending means joining to already existing files so i i hope the basic operations or a base order you have got a basic idea on what are files so this is our syllabus out of the syllabus we have completed these parts till now in the next part we will be having a detailed discussion programmatically about the text file thank you very much stay tuned for the next session